Hello, Alan here at FlightSimCoach.com. Today we're going to be looking at the IFR visual approach procedure that is outlined in the AIM. Typically, this procedure is not commonly practiced as a part of formal instrument training, but you'll find that it is commonly used uh, for IFR arrivals. I think I heard somewhere that almost 70% of IFR arrivals in the U.S. end with visual approach clearances. So with that said, let's look at an uncommonly common instrument procedure. We'll also look at the use of the visual approach uh, procedure that you'll find in many of the new GNS navigators. And additionally, we'll couple that with our autopilot uh, so you can see how the uh, approach procedure works out from a fully automated standpoint. For this session, we're going to be flying in a Cessna 172 with a G1000 NXI, and uh, we're in Microsoft Flight Sim. Our current flight profile is that we're located about 20 miles north-northwest of the New Orleans Lakefront Airport, and we're level at 3,000 feet. We are approaching the last fix in the uh, arrival that we selected uh, into New Orleans area. And we have just received our ATIS information Bravo, which stated that the winds are 180 at 8. The visibility is 5 miles. Sky condition 2,500 broken. Barometric pressure 29.92. And that visual approaches are in use, landing and departing runway 18 right. We just checked in with our approach controller that's going to be handling us into the New Orleans airport and uh, told them that we were at 3,000 feet and we have information Bravo. And uh, the approach controllers advised us to expect the visual approach for runway 18 right and to descend and maintain 1,800. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and unpause the simulator and get us descending down to that assigned altitude. And of course, we're going to continue on our route of flight inbound until we're uh, told to do so in just a few minutes. So let's uh, pause and I'll set in the altitude pre-select for 1,800. And we'll just set a little descent uh, on our VS. We've still got about 11 miles to go to get to that uh, ray up, which is uh, the last fix on this star that we uh, decided to use coming into New Orleans. So we got plenty of time. And uh, of course, we were told to expect the visual approach to runway 18. And uh, with that, we'll remind ourselves of the information that pertains to the visual approach, which is found in the AIM and other places. But uh, I'm going to go over a couple of those things while we're making this descent. And it says in the AIM that uh, visual approach is conducted on an IFR flight plan, and it authorizes a pilot to proceed visually and clear the clouds to the airport. That's what our hopes are, is that uh, we should be able to get below the cloud deck with the conditions that I just read off from our ATIS. And uh, the pilot must have either the airport or the preceding aircraft identified in sight. Don't have the airport yet. We'll be looking for it. And uh, the reported weather has to meet a certain criteria, and it says that uh, the airport must have a ceiling at or above 1,000 and a visibility of three miles or greater, which we have that. Uh, ATC can use this type of approach when it's operationally beneficial. And the last line that I want to read uh, that pertains to our use of automation is it says that when conducting visual approaches, pilots are encouraged to use other available navigational aids to assist in the positive lateral and vertical alignment with the runway. So that's uh, a feature that uh, I want us to look at with regard to this GPS navigator, which does have visual approaches programmed into its database. So we're uh, about to level off here at uh, our assigned altitude of 1,800 feet. We're going to take a quick look outside 
and see if we can, uh, we're over Lake Ponce and Train, so there's just water beneath us, but uh, we're looking, uh, the airport would be off to our left, approximately 10 o'clock position or so. So we'll look at that in just a minute. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, load in the procedures. So I'm going to keep my PFD screen up here, and I'm going to select PROC. And enter. And uh, the listing of these visual approaches is normally found in the bottom of the list. So you can see there's a number to choose from here. So let's find the visual 18 right. And there it is. And we're going to select the straight in uh, place to join it. This particular unit gives two options. Vector's location is real close to the airport. Straight in is a little further out extended out from the center line of our runway. So uh, we're going to choose it today. Give us a little more room to maneuver and join the approach. All right, and uh, we're going to go ahead and load it because we're not ready to make any turns as of yet till we're told uh, to do so. That's going to be dependent uh, upon us getting the airport in sight. I do now see the airport uh, Beacon flashing off uh, roughly my 10 o'clock position, so I have it in sight. I'm going to call New Orleans and tell them I have New Orleans Lakefront in sight, and uh, they should then give me my uh, clearance as stated as I'm cleared for the visual approach runway 18 right. That then frees me up to go ahead and descend and to navigate laterally with discretion uh, towards uh, the airport to get myself situated for the intent to do uh, a uh, visual to 1-8 right. So let's see. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go back to our flight plan. And uh, let's go ahead and go procedure. And let's activate the approach. Should be a left turn. That's it. So we'll go ahead and make that left turn. And I'm going to flip over now to the MFD and uh, have you note how the approach uh, appears on the, uh, on the, in the flight plan from, uh, from a little bit more elaborate standpoint. So there's the straight. That's actually a waypoint that they programmed into this design for this visual. And uh, the final is so uh, we'll cross over it on the way inbound. Uh, notice off to the right, it says 1,600. That's roughly the altitude out there uh, to, you know, try to join uh, when you're established inbound at the straight waypoint. So I, with that said, what I'm going to do is go back over to my um, altitude, and I'm going to set it for 1,600. And I'm going to go ahead and descend down to that since I have been cleared for the visual. And we'll set that up just a couple of hundred feet. Okay, so that all looks good. I'll just uh, keep it here, make sure we capture okay. Everything on the scoreboard or the autopilot status bar is looking good. So we should be in good shape. We have uh, 7.5 miles to go before we get to that waypoint name straight. And I'm going to go ahead and look back outside. And yep, to the airport is to my right just a little bit now. So I uh, see that. I see the Lake Ponson train bridge that we're crossing over right now. So good visual conditions to continue the approach inbound. Don't need to change my mind for any reason. Okay, we've leveled off here at 1,600. All of our checklists uh, are done, so we won't go over those items now. And um, we are about uh, five miles out. I'm going to go ahead and arm the uh, autopilot for the approach so that uh, the hopes are that it will pick up the glide path as well when we close in on the straight waypoint. And of course, it should provide us with the autopilot, should provide us with lateral and vertical guidance. And then, somewhere, probably in another mile or so, our expectations would be that uh, New Orleans approach hands us off to New Orleans Tower. I mean, we do the typical 
uh, transition into that uh, class Delta airspace in this particular case. The uh, thing I'm going to do now as well is I'm going to go over to my, since I'm uh, leveled off, I'm going to go ahead and set my altitude pre-select down to about 800 feet. That's just a memory jogger because the uh, um, the approach itself is not a published uh, instrument approach procedure, so I have to respect the limitations for the installed autopilot. And I'm just going to say that the uh, limitations for this particular autopilot are 800 feet AGL, so meaning when I come in established, uh, when I hit about 800 feet AGL, I'll go ahead and uh, disable the autopilot to respect the autopilot limitations. Let's have a look outside. Everything's looking pretty good. And again, the airport's off to our right, so we're expecting to make a little bit of a right turn to line up on the 1-8 right. One point nine miles before we make that turn to the right. And we'll just go ahead and uh pretend like approach told us to change to tower, so we switch over to tower and we check in with lakefront tower. We're inbound on the visual runway one eight right, and our hopes are is that they clear us to land, maybe give us an update on the winds as well. There's our right turn. There's our glide path armed, and we'll be locking in on it here shortly. And I'm going to reduce the power back so I manage my speed with the power. And we've been cleared to land. Everything's looking good on glide path. Lateral uh, D bar centered nicely. Let's go ahead and have a quick look outside. Okay, I've got uh, the runway alignment really good. I've got th this particular uh, uh, runway has an approach flight system, and uh, so everything's looking pretty good. And we got 400 to go for autopilot disconnect. There's a typical shot of uh, over the dash out the windshield. And we've got 100 to go for AP disconnect. Still looks good. Glide path is good. Lateral guidance is okay. And at this point in time, I would uh, disconnect my autopilot, transfer to hand flying. But I'm going to leave that with you today. I hope you've enjoyed this session. And I uh, look forward to maybe seeing you online at flightsimcoach.com. Have a great day.